whoever would probably get a little got it on their screen. Right, so thank you very much for coming this evening um, to our workshop, How to Get Control of Your Sugar Cravings. So I'm going to get straight on and tell you the three steps. And then Sue and I are going to talk about these in much more detail um, individually. So the three steps to get control of your sugar cravings are physically supporting your body, learning how to manage your mind and your emotions, so emotional and mind management, and then also accountability. So these, these three steps are the three keys to getting control of your sugar cravings. So Sue's going to tell you, first of all, all about the physical aspect of sugar and the physical support. And then I'm going to come on and tell you about the mind management and the accountability. So I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to hand you straight over to Sue. Thank you. Thanks, Nikki. You probably need to make me a host then, don't you, so I can share my screen. While she's doing that, I'll just introduce myself. Um, so I am Sue Thomas. I um, call myself the Sugar Free Coach. I've been in the wellness industry now for 20 years. Um, uh, previously as a personal trainer and more recently over the last six, seven years as a nutritional therapist. And I came to um, the sugar concept um, after my own health journey. About 15 years ago, I had a streptococcal knee infection, which resulted um, on, in me being on about 25 days of very high dose antibiotics. Fast forward that uh, four years and I was having to take sleep in the afternoon. I was exhausted all the time and I wasn't walking the talk as far as my clients were concerned. And I, I knew at that point that I needed to take back control. I needed to do something to ensure that my own health improved if I was going to carry on as a personal trainer. And this is when I first started then to move down the, the route of nutrition because I realized that actually what I was feeding my body was not supporting my energy levels to be able to work as a personal trainer. I was having things that I thought were healthy, but actually were messing up my blood sugars completely. So I was having granola and yogurt for breakfast, or I might have had toast and peanut butter for breakfast. But I was then also having, I was hungry by half past 10. So I was having a cereal bar, a low calorie cereal bar, because I believed that was healthy. That was what uh, the marketing people were telling me that this was the thing to eat. And then by lunchtime, I was hungry again. So as I was making my lunch, I was a bit of mindless eating as well. I wasn't really realizing that I was kind of eating a few slices of cheese or, or you know, just snacking on things as I was making my lunch. And by four o'clock, I was having to take a sleep because I was exhausted. And so I needed to do something about my own well-being before I could then serve my clients in the way that I wanted to. And so I created this program for myself that involved initially just taking sugar out of my diet and looking at where all that sugar existed. And the results were astounding. My energy levels rocketed um, and I was able to then really start to take control, back control of my health and serve my clients in a much better way. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share with you everything that I discovered as part of that process as far as um, the truth about sugar is concerned. So bear with me a second while I just share my screen. Nikki, can you give me a thumbs up to let me know that you can see that screen? Great stuff. So the truth about sugar. So sugar is an addictive substance. When we consume sugar in the form of a cereal bar, in the form of a chocolate bar, in the form of cookies or cake or whatever it is, we like it. It gives us a little dopamine release. It makes us crave it a little bit more. And often that's why we comfort eat, because we like that feeling of that feeling of eating sugary foods when we're feeling a bit miserable to lift us up, gives us that dopamine hit. But more importantly is what the sugar does to your insulin levels. So insulin is a hormone that's released by the pancreas into the bloodstream. And it is designed to pick up the sugars and take them to the cells for energy production. The mitochondria in the cells will produce the energy. But nine times out of 10 in 21st century life, we're not actually moving to use that energy. So the insulin then comes out of the bloodstream very quickly, goes to the liver, takes the sugars to the liver, and the liver then con converts those sugars to triglycerides to store it as fat. But what happens when the insulin comes out of the cells very quick, out of the uh, bloodstream, sorry, very quickly, is we will have a blood sugar crash or a fall in blood sugars. And as a result, 
um, the, because the brain functions on glucose, it functions on, on the, the glucose, which is the form of carbohydrate or the form of sugar that the body functions on. Um, because we go into a bit of a low blood sugar, we might find ourselves feeling a bit unproductive, uh, not actually being able to focus, being a bit distracted, um, and we crave sugar again. And so we will go in, in search of something because the brain functions on glucose. It wants you to eat something to bring your blood sugars back up again. So we eat something, the blood sugars come back up again, but usually they come up too fast. The cells don't need the sugar for energy production. So the insulin then quickly takes the sugars out of the bloodstream again to the liver, and we have another blood sugar crash. And then we crave sugar because the brain is telling us we want more. And so this cycle continues. We are on what is known as a blood sugar roller coaster, peaks and troughs of blood sugar throughout the day. And a way that you can tell if you're on a blood sugar roller coaster is you'll be hungry by half past 10. You'll be kind of bit of mindless eating or you may be kind of prowling around the kitchen looking for something to eat before you making your lunch. You'll be hungry again around three o'clock. You might have the three to four p.m. slump. You might snack on something before you eat your dinner and then you'll be looking for something sugary in the evening as well. So that is a blood sugar roller coaster. Insulin is a really dominant hormone. It will um, encourage the release of a hormone called ghrelin, which tells us we are hungry. So we end up eating more when our blood sugars are on a bit of a roller coaster. And it also suppresses the release of a hormone called leptin, which is the hormone that tells us we are full. So we never feel sated. We never feel full when our blood sugars are on a roller coaster and we end up eating far more than we realize we were eating. And, and so consequently, we're just on this peak and trough of good energy, low energy, good energy, low energy, eating foods to try and get our energies back up, which is exactly what I was doing when I realized that I needed to get my health back under control. So insulin is a really dominant hormone, but it's a really important hormone and we need to understand how we can manage it. So let's take a look at the glucose spectrum, at the carbohydrate spectrum. So carbohydrates come in the form of this kind of what I like to call a glucose spectrum. You've got greens and reds and oranges, and then you've got beiges and whites. Now the greens and the reds and the oranges are fruits and vegetables. They are full of carbohydrate, full of what the body will turn into glucose to use for energy production. Now, any metabolic process your body goes through releases substances called free radicals. And these free radicals can be quite harmful to the system. But the reds and the greens and the oranges contain substances called antioxidants. And antioxidants will neutralize the free radicals and get rid of them out of the system and won't allow them to do any damage. If we're getting our carbohydrate and specifically our glucose from beige and white, the beiges and the whites don't contain the antioxidants that will neutralize these free radicals. And so as a result, these free radicals start to cause inflammation in the body. They start to attack healthy tissue, which will cause some inflammation. So you might find yourself having a bit of joint pain, maybe in the knuckles, maybe in your wrists, maybe in your knees, a little bit of joint pain. Uh, you get your peaks and troughs of energy. You struggle to cope with external stress properly uh, because internally your body is starting to be a little bit stressed. Now, this inflammation is really important. Stick with it. Just lodge it there in your brain as far as inflammation is concerned, because we're going to carry on talking about inflammation and what that does to the body as we progress through this webinar. So this is your glucose spectrum. If you are getting your carbohydrates, your glucose specifically from beiges and whites, that is you being on probably on a blood sugar roller coaster with some inflammation being set up in the body. If you're getting your carbohydrates more from reds and greens and oranges, that is going to give you it's going to give you consistent energy with a nicely balanced insulin level, but lots of antioxidants to neutralize those free radicals. So you won't have the same level of inflammation in the system. Now, when we're consuming lots and lots of carbohydrate from the beige end of the spectrum, so the cereal bars that I was consuming, the toast, um, anything basically that is beige pasta, and then your, your cookies and biscuits and all, you know, sweet things, the alcohol as well is full of sugar. When we're consuming lots of those foods, this is when we have this blood sugar roller coaster. So you can see here in the red, 
the peaks and troughs of insulin. When insulin is high, that is when we release ghrelin, that hormone that I told you about, and we don't release leptin. And what we want to do is we want to reverse it and get insulin low so that we can start to produce leptin, which will help us to manage our appetite better and naturally help us to eat slightly less. But when insulin is, is on this peak and trough of blood sugar, it's a stress on the body. So we've already got inflammation going on because of the way that the carbohydrates, or the glucose is being accessed from the beige and the white carbohydrates. We've already talked about that. And now we've got this stress on the body from the peaks and troughs of insulin. And these two things together cause the release of a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is released in response to stress. It's a really important hormone again, but if it rises too high in the system, it will become toxic to the body. And as a result, it starts to cause a disruption to our gut bacteria. So our gut bacteria is really important. It forms a really solid barrier between the outside world and our inside world, if you like, because it lines the wall of the intestine and it protects the endothelial cells that you can see here in red. It protects them from pathogens and bacteria and um, uh, anything that shouldn't be basically um, allowed to kind of touch the endothelial cells. But if our cortisol levels are high because we're stressed, Cortisol disrupts the gut bacteria. And as a result, we start to get holes in that strong barrier that, that coats the endothelial cells. And so pathogens and undigested food particles and fungi can begin to break away, at the, break down the junctions of the endothelial cells and start to work their way through into the cardiovascular system. And this is what's known as leaky gut. It's talked about a lot. A lot of um, medical practitioners don't know how to treat leaky gut, but it's directly linked to the amount of cortisol that is in our body and the amount of inflammation that is being caused internally. But here's the thing. When all these particles are passing across the gut wall, the body actually starts to form more inflammation. So the inflammation that's now being created around the gut wall is a bit like the inflammation that is caused, that is created when you cut your finger. So when you cut your finger, you have a little bit of inflammation that forms around that cut because it's preventing, or it's kind of making a seal and preventing anything from passing across that breach in your defenses. And exactly the same thing happens around the gut wall. If the gut bacteria starts to be um, to have holes in it, things can pass across, break down the endothelial cell junctions, pass across into the cardiovascular system. The immune system then goes, right, we've got to patch up that hole. We'll patch it up with some, some inflammation. But if it's happening all over the gut wall, more and more inflammation is being set up around the gut wall. And that's known as systemic inflammation. It's deep down inflammation around your organs that can be really disruptive to the body. It starts to cause all sorts of metabolic consequences. It can have an inter it can have an impact on cardiovascular disease. It can have an impact on um, uh, your cholesterol balance, it can have an impact on uh, your, your blood sugar balance, which is already out of alignment, it can start to cause the things like type 2 diabetes, and it can also cause um, weight gain around the middle. So this systemic inflammation is really disruptive to the system, it can disrupt the thyroid function, it can disrupt hormone balance, it can cause um, autoimmune conditions like fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, all of these things can be linked back to the inflammation that's going on around the gut wall. That inflammation is happening because the gut bacteria in the intestine has got holes in it, directly caused by the cortisol that's been released in response to the inflammation that's being caused by the free radicals that are coming from the sugar that we are consuming. So there's this cascade effect essentially that's causing massive metabolic issues in the body if we don't get our blood sugars and our particularly our insulin under control so that we can prevent this, this bit of inflammation that's being caused by the, the types of food that we're consuming, the cascade effect down to this massive inflammation around the intestine that is then leading to all these 
big metabolic conditions that are really hard to treat, that are really hard to, you can't medicate for them. The only way that you can get some of these conditions under control is by really focusing on reducing the amount of sugar, beige carbohydrate that you have in your diet and increasing the amount of reds and greens and oranges. When I was um, personal training, I thought, how am I ever going to have any energy if I don't have the beige carbohydrate, the complex carbohydrate that we've been told for years is is the kind of carbohydrate that we should be consuming, but actually it's a really disruptive, it's a processed carbohydrate and it's really disruptive to the body. So if someone says they're not eating carbs, but they're actually eating fruit and veg, they are eating carbs. That, that is a great form of carbohydrate to give you loads of energy if you're getting it from fruit and veg. So the consequences, we've already gone through that, you know, autoimmune conditions, but IBS because of this inflammation, lack of productivity, low mood, et cetera, et cetera. So, so many reasons why we might be struggling with underlying health conditions that we can't put our finger on, that the medical practitioners can't say, can't say to you, this is where it's coming from, but actually it's because our blood sugars are out of balance. Sugars are hidden everywhere. They're hidden in low fat yogurts, massive amount of sugars in low fat yogurts, because if you take out a food group like fat, you have to add something else into it to give it flavor sauces all pasta sauces ketchup sauce you can see the amount of sugar that there is in ketchup and then also diet drinks be really mindful of diet drinks because as soon as that sweetness touches our mouth the message is sent to the pancreas to release insulin and it's less about the sugar and more about the insulin that is causing us to have health issues in 21st century life processed foods are full of sugar all the sports drinks full of sugar, full of caffeine, really disruptive to the system. And I'm not suggesting that you need to be a monk and go and live in a, in a monastery somewhere in Tibet. But what we do need to think about is where is this sugar that we are consuming? A really great tip is if you look at the label on, on, a, on a packet, if it's got more than six grams of sugar per 100 grams, then it's going to be added sugar and it's going to cause an insulin spike. Um, and um, be again careful because they're quite clever. They say oh, it's uh, per, per portion and per portion might be only 30 grams. So it'll be five grams of sugar per 30 grams. But actually in reality, that's about 16 grams of sugar per 100 grams. So you need to be really careful when you're reading labels of where sugar is hidden. And some of these um, uh, cereal bars and stuff, some of these protein bars, high protein bars, if you look at the back, there's about 12 or 13 different sweeteners in there. Um, even though it says low sugar, less than 0.2 grams of sugar on it, it will have tons of sweeteners in there and it will still have an impact on your insulin balance. So really important to be mindful of where sugars and sweet sweetness or sweeteners are hidden because it will still have an impact on your insulin. So where you want to be as far as your blood sugar balance is concerned is this blue line in the middle. You should be able to go from breakfast to lunch without needing to snack. Again, 21st century life media has told us the thing to do is to eat five small meals a day because that's going to keep your blood sugars balanced. It's actually not. It's just going to push your blood sugars high. What you want to be doing is bringing your blood sugars down as much as possible and keeping them really balanced because the lower the insulin, the more leptin you produce, the more effective you will be at fat burning. The lower the insulin, the less brain fog you'll have as long as it's within that green line, not when it's crashing, it needs to be within that green line. But if you can keep it really steady, you can get on top of um, brain fog, you can have greater mental clarity, you can improve mood, you can have more energy. When I stopped having a sandwich at lunchtime, I had tons more energy in the afternoon um, because, because my body wasn't having to process all this bread. Uh, you can get rid of IBS symptoms. You can get rid of the um, the issues around the gut wall. You can start to reverse leaky joint, leaky gut. Sorry, improve joint pain. So many benefits to reducing the amount of sugar. You don't have to be totally sugar free. I call myself the sugar free coach, but I I would also hold my hand up and say I'm ninety percent sugar free. I do have some sugar in my diet sometimes, but I know how it makes me feel, and so I avoid it unless it's absolutely the, the, the right thing to do kind of thing. And so you want to be keeping your blood sugars really balanced to give you all this energy um, and real and productivity and just feeling so much better about yourself, reducing bloating, all that kind of thing. Now, the way to do that is there's four key things that you can do and you can start doing them right now. 
eat protein for breakfast. First thing in the morning, your, um, your stomach is full of hydrochloric acid and hydrochloric acid is designed to break down protein. It's not designed to break down toast and peanut butter or granola and milk like I was having because I thought it was healthy. It's designed, it's designed to break down protein. Protein will cause a slower release of sugars into your bloodstream and therefore a much slower release of insulin. And it is insulin that you want to get under control. If you have carbohydrate for breakfast, it's gonna spike your blood sugars really quickly. So cereals and toast that we've been told to eat in the Western world are common and will spike your blood sugars. And so you will be snacking on the cereal bar or whatever it is mid morning or the two digestive biscuits. So eat protein for breakfast to get your blood sugars balanced. And what you eat for breakfast has an influence for the rest of the day. So by lunchtime, you'll be ready to eat again. You won't need to snack and then you'll avoid the afternoon slump. You'll make much better choices at lunchtime. You don't get the afternoon slump and therefore you will be uh, making better choices in the evening as well. You actually end up naturally eating less when your blood sugars are nicely balanced. Fill your plate with colours, get all the reds and the greens and the oranges on there so that you're, you've got all this really nice um, fibre that feeds the gut bacteria and helps the gut bacteria to get really nicely established again. Um, but also the colours will help to reduce inflammation and to help your, keep your blood sugars nicely balanced. Finish eating by seven o'clock at night because we want insulin to be lower so that we can release growth hormone, which is a hormone that helps us to go into deep quality sleep. Um, sleep is really important. It cleans the brain, cleans all the muscles, gets the intestine working properly. And if our insulin is high, we don't get good quality sleep. There's lots of research now to show that people who haven't had good quality sleep often have got blood sugar imbalances again the following day and will end up snacking on at least 500 extra calories of sugary food just to get them through the day. So if you can finish eating by seven o'clock, that's going to have then a consequence as far as your quality of your sleep and then how you feel the following day. And then avoid snacking because like I said, you don't want high blood sugars. You don't want blood sugars that are just high all the time. You want to have lower blood sugars that are um, really nicely balanced in order to release the right hormones for fat burning, for energy, um, and for just general feeling good every single day. So some simple things that you can do. If you get your breakfast right, you won't need to snack. If you fill your plate full of colours, you'll be full and you won't want to eat until the next meal anyway. And you'll, you'll um, finish your evening meal, if you can finish it by seven o'clock, you'll get a much better night's sleep if your day has been full of all those colours and lots of good quality protein. So I'm very aware that I've been talking for a while, so I'm going to hand back over to Nikki. But if you did want to get in touch with me, you can fo um, follow me on uh, Instagram, Sue Thomas, the Sugar Free Coach, or my Facebook page is exactly the same, just without the little underscore. Um, or you can have a look at my website, suethomaswellbeing.co.uk. So I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to hand back over to Nikki. Thank you very much. I always love hearing you talking about all the, the physical effects of sugar and, and and actually I always find it quite frightening but it's just it's just interesting because I personally practice fasting so I only ever eat between the hours of like 12 and 7 generally yeah. um but I noticed that like today I didn't have much time to prepare a huge lunch so I literally had cold chicken I boiled two eggs and I had some chopped up pepper and that kept me going. I wasn't hungry for the rest of the afternoon until then I was cooking tea. And I was like, I'm not actually desperately hungry for this food. Whereas yeah. if I'd have like grabbed a sandwich, I would have, I would have been, um, you would have been I would have been starving. Up. Yeah. And also we think that in order to manage our blood sugars and all this kind of thing, it's got to be really complicated, but it hasn't. There's a good example there of you know, chicken, boiled eggs and peppers. That's a really good example of how you yeah. can make it super easy for yourself yeah. to balance your blood sugars. It doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah. I also have a question, if you don't mind me asking this, Sue. Every time I'm chopping up my cauliflower and my parsnips, I'm like, this is beige. <laughs> Well, yes. So there is just so few. It's white, actually, isn't it? So okay. it's almost along the other end. So there's just a few exceptions to the rule. Yeah. So okay. that's what we would call starchy carbohydrates. So it's kind right. of in the middle there on the yellow. You know, you've got your green and you've got your red yeah. and then you've got your yellow stroke, stroke sort of whitey vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But actually cauliflower is great for your stomach, um, for your gut bacteria. It's full of 
full of short chain fatty acids, which really feed the good bacteria in the uh, in the intestine. So um, yeah, never worry that parsnips and cauliflower are beige. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Sue. So. I'm now going to talk to you about the emotional and mind management side of sugar cravings. And some of you, this will be familiar to some of you. And if it is, um, or if you've heard me speaking before, then I really believe that repetition is key. And you might just hear it slightly differently. Every time we get a little bit of information, the next time we hear something, it just resonates a bit differently for us. So you're a human. You are actually a human being which means you have a human brain. And the human brain is amazing. It is phenomenally complicated and I'm not gonna go into it. I'm not a neuroscientist, but I do, I do simplify it down to two parts of the brain. And that's your primal brain, which is your amygdala at the back of your head here and your prefrontal cortex, so your higher brain. Now, your primal brain is really old. Quite literally, that part of the human brain has not evolved since our caveman days. And I'm going to talk in a minute about what happened in our caveman days with dopamine. But most of us are being driven by this cave person, childlike thing hundreds of thousands of years ago. So the first tip that I have for you is to name your primal brain, because all your primal brain wants to do is keep you safe. And it does that in a number of different ways, which I'll come on to in a second. So when you name your primal brain, mine is ironically called Sue, <laughs> not because I dislike the name Sue. I actually love the name Sue, but it's just then enables you to detach yourself a little bit from it. You're able to maybe have a conversation with it, treat it like a friend, really start to understand where that primal brain is coming from why it's driving you to do what you currently don't think you have any control over when we access our prefrontal cortex our higher brain this is the part of the brain that makes you you this is it enables you to plan ahead of time it enables you to think rationally it is your expert it will always give you the best advice your primal brain however just wants all the pleasure your prefrontal cortex really wants to keep you healthy and serve you. Only very few of us actually listen to this voice. It's very quiet. Whereas the primal brain literally screams at us. So but we're talking about functioning adults here. This isn't children. Children's prefrontal cortex isn't developed. It doesn't start developing until about the age of 11 and it continues up until the age of 25. So we're really talking about functioning adults, not children. They don't have the ability to rationalize. If you have children, you'll notice that. Another thing I ought to tell you is I do have a bit of a potty mouth. So if I do swear at you, it's not because I want to offend. It's just how I express myself at times. So this is what we call the motivational triad. So the primal brain, your primal brain, Sue, she is motivated by three things. The primal brain wants to conserve energy. So it wants everything to be easy. It always wants to avoid pain and it always wants to seek pleasure. This made absolute sense hundreds of thousands of years ago. If we over overdid our energy levels and we were tired and knackered we wouldn't have been able to go out and hunt for our food or gather our surprise our supplies if we were in any sort of pain we would have perished and died so it makes sense to avoid pain emotional or physical and back in the caveman days the 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 only way that the only reason we were motivated to get up and go out of our cave was because we got a dopamine hit and dopamine floods your body with pleasure so I'm, I, I would like to apologize as well if you can hear my children downstairs <laughs> with their dad. I can hear them. Hopefully you can't. So hundreds of thousands of years ago, we had true pleasures and a true pleasure were, were, would have been plants and meat, the, the wholesome natural foods that were around us in that time. We had water. We had sex. We had the safety of a cave and fire the warmth of a fire, and we had the safety of our pack. So whenever we ate the, the natural foods, whenever we drank water, whenever we had sex, whenever we were in our cave warm and dry, whenever we were surrounded by our pack, 
we had hits of dopamine. Dopamine floods our body with pleasure. So it made sure that we went and got these things, these things to ensure that we survived as a human race. Totally makes sense. Roll on to our now current day. Whereas before it was natural whole and wholesome foods, we've now got processed foods and sugar, like Sue was just telling us. Whereas before we just had water, we've now got fizzy drinks, alcohol, caffeinated sports drinks. Whereas before we just had sex, now we've got pornography. The fire and the cave, we've now got the sofa and Netflix and, and, and gathering supplies from Amazon. And the safety of the pack, we've now got social media. So in our modern day world, we've now got so many false manufactured things that actually give us a heightened hit of dopamine. Of course, our brain is going to think that these are a survival requirement. It is going to look at the chocolate bar. It's going to look at the cake and go, we literally need that. Otherwise, we're going to die which is why logically engaging our prefrontal cortex, we know that's actually not true. And in fact, the opposite is true because we're making ourselves so ill when we start to over consume all of these items. So we can have compassion for that part of our brain. That loud primal brain that's screaming at you to eat all the sugar is doing it because it thinks it's a survival requirement. We don't have to judge it, criticize it or be beat it up. We can just have some compassion for it, but logically start to think, hang on a minute, this isn't actually helping me. So here's the other thing I'd like to teach, and then I'm going to tell you how to get how to actually deal with all of this. This is how the world works, only this might go against everything that you've ever been raised to believe. Life gives us circumstances. Life gives us situations and events that we have no control over. That will be the food in the supermarket. It will be other people's behavior. It's the weather, cars breaking down. It's illnesses and bereavements. These circumstances are completely neutral until our brain gets involved and we have a thought about it. What we think, the story that our brain tells us, creates the feeling within our body. So it's our thoughts that create our emotions not the circumstance. Depending on how you're feeling will then drive all your actions. You react, you respond or avoid and try and distract from this emotion. And depending on what you do or don't do gives you a result in your life. So as an example to prove this, the world is currently experiencing the same bereavement. We have all lost Queen Elizabeth III. Some of us, and I choose to be in this position, feel sad about that. I think that's a great loss to our history. So when I think that's a great loss, I feel sad. I choose. So just because our thoughts create our feelings doesn't always mean to say we should be positive. But there will be people in the world that just don't give a shit. They couldn't care less <laughs> what has just happened because they have different thoughts about it that will create different feelings. So it can't possibly be the circumstance. It can't possibly be that, that it's the circumstance that create our emotions. Because if that were true, we would all feel exactly the same way. And we don't. So this is also true for sugar. There are actually some people in the world that might see a chocolate bar. And actually, this is me now, which co constantly blows my mind. I don't actually want to eat this anymore. I don't have an urge to eat it. Whereas a couple of years ago, I would have seen this and I'd have been like, oh, I need to have some. Now, that's not to say my body doesn't respond to it. Like my mouth remembers what that was like, but I genuinely don't actually want to eat it anymore because my thoughts have changed. So the first step, the first key that we all need to become, we all need to start with is just becoming aware of your trigger. What is your circumstance that continues then the thoughts, the feelings and the actions? And that could be that you just, you see a cake. It could be that you see chocolate. It could be like Sue was saying earlier in that 10 o'clock, that 10 o'clock slump in the morning and then that three o'clock slump in the afternoon. 
it could be that you're experiencing an emotion. So during the pandemic and lockdown, so many people were bored. They didn't want to feel bored. So they reached for the sugar and the alcohol to make them feel better. The process I'm about to teach you, by the way, can be applied to anything that you're overdoing, whether it's I'm using the word sugar, but for you, it might be alcohol, it might be crisps, it might be cheese, it might be scrolling on social media. It, it doesn't matter what you're overdoing. If it's having a negative effect, this is going to help you or you just want to stop doing it. This is going to help you. But the first step is awareness. So when the, when you notice you see the chocolate bar, you have an emotion, it's a time of day. What do you think? So you start to have this urge to have something sweet. What is it that you're thinking in that moment? And the most common thoughts are, it'll make me feel better. It's a reward. It's a treat. It'll give me a boost of energy. So it's actually that thought that creates the craving. It creates the urge to eat it. So you experience the emotion of a craving, and that is just a vibration in your body. And because we label that as negative, we're like we have to get rid of it, we must have to respond to it. So we see you taking the action of eating the sugary food. And then what happens is because you get the dopamine hit, the result is that temporarily you do feel better. Temporarily, for just a few short moments, you have that flood of, of niceness in your body, that oh feeling. And then the crap kicks in. Then you start to judge yourself. You feel guilty. You wish you hadn't done it. Feel sick. Get irritable. I get really irritable when I have sugar. Your medical conditions are aggra aggravated. So in the long term, put on weight or not losing the weight you want to lose. So whilst in the short term, you feel better. In the long term, you're just feeling crap. So first of all, becoming aware of what this is for you. And then we get to learn how to control it. And the way that you do that is by the, doing this. So this is the key. So finding your trigger, so circumstance being your trigger. So maybe you see the chocolate or you see the cupcake if you're in a cafe. And you might have the thought, it's a treat. Looking at this thought and the it'll make me feel better, we can actually see that this is a bit of a lie because is it really a treat to put on weight? Is it really a treat to feel sick, to feel guilty, to feel judgment and cr criticizing yourself? In the long term, that is not a treat. It is not a treat to put this into your body. Only marketing, the way that we're raised, our current society, has we've, we've been taught and conditioned to believe that it's a reward, it's a treat, it'll make you feel better. And temporarily, yes, in the short term, it does. But the long term, it absolutely doesn't. So when you notice, let me get my pen, when you notice your thought and you've noticed that urge, you feel the urge in your body, what we want to do is interrupt it at that point. And this is the bit that you get to control. Because what we want to do is instead of eating, we don't want to eat the food. We want to allow and experience this emotion. And all you do is simply recognize how you're feeling it in your body. You can do this with any emotion in your life. Absolute anger, embarrassment, excitement, joy, love. It's all being created by thoughts. And if you're responding in a way that you don't currently want to respond, this same process, this same process applies. Just ask yourself, where in your body do you feel that emotion? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it maybe moving around or is it in one place? So for me, when I'm experiencing the craving for sugar, I, I feel this fuzzing in the top of my arms and this pulling like to what like from my diaphragm. And I can remember when I first started practicing this work, um, my husband was trying to have a conversation with me one day and this, the, my boys were having some sweets and the sweets were out in front of me. And I was just like, Johnny, I just have to breathe through an urge. And it was like having a labor contraction, right? Because it was growing and growing and growing. And I knew it was because I was thinking, oh, it's a treat. And I, I just want something sweet. And I was able to breathe and experience the emotion. And then it disappears. It actually goes. Because our emotions, if we were experiencing them, only last for 90 seconds. 90 seconds. 
Whereas when we go on and eat it, the, the effects of that last for years or months or days, depending on how severe it is. So when we actually allow our emotion to be present in our body, what then happens, the, revo- the result is that temporarily you're going to feel rubbish. For those few short moments, I'm not going to lie, they feel shit because you're having this urge, you're having this craving, you really think it's true that it's a treat that's going to make you feel better. And you're experiencing that emotion and that feels rubbish. But when you breathe and experience it and realize it's completely harmless and it disappears, then what happens in the long term is you just start to feel so good. This is what we want to get to. That's where we want to be. And it's really simple, just sitting and experiencing and allowing that emotion to be present. And if you repeat this over and over and over again, I promise you, you will start to get control of your sugar cravings. They start to reduce. When when your body realizes, oh, okay, that urge doesn't, doesn't actually create a dopamine hit anymore, it's not going to bother doing it. It's going to stop. It's going to get weaker. And then you start to manage the emotion rather than, than the emotion managing you. So this is this this is the key emotionally on how to get to control of your sugar cravings. It is that straightforward. The only problem is, I'm going to probably guarantee that most of you have heard all of this tonight. You know that sugar isn't doing you any good. You know you don't really want to be eating it, and yet you still are which comes on to my third point of accountability. When you're physically, when you're supporting your body physically with good food and and good supplementation, when you're managing your mind and you're managing your emotions, the only other thing then is having someone with love and compassion, hopefully, to just keep you on the right track. So maybe that could be a friend, it could be a work colleague. If you know someone in your community that also wants to reduce your the sugar cravings, show them this, get together and come up with a plan on how you're going to support each other. Because it's so much easier to see somebody else's behaviors and thought patterns. They can see yours so much easier. And with love and compassion, they can point out to you and keep you accountable on that journey. So that brings me to the end of the workshop this evening. Sue has told you the physical side of sugar. I've covered the emotional side of sugar. You could quite literally finish the call now and with your cup of tea this evening before you go to bed or tomorrow morning, when you go to reach for that biscuit, you could just stop, remind yourself of your primal brain and sit with the emotion and not eat the sugar. But because you're a human, I know that you might need a little bit more support than just this. So with your permission, I would really like to tell you how I can help you further. I have got a 21 day group program. Over those 21 days, you get access to a number of different lessons that teach you this and much deeper and the further skills on how to actually start to manage your emotions. We have four live coaching calls together in the group where, first of all, I think it's amazing when you start to see other people having the same thoughts as you, it then becomes really obvious this is all the human brains, not just mine, because it is not just yours. It is all the humans that are the same. Um, and there's a group, a Facebook group daily. I give you hints and tips and journal prompts and um, affirmations that help you to manage your mind. Along with that, you also get two really high quality supplements. Um, there's a drink called Vitalife, which is amazing at creating alkalinity within our body and illnesses and cancers thrive in acidic environments. It reduces any internal inflammation like Sue was talking about earlier. It helps to really support the liver function. Um, And the the liver is kind of key for over 600 functions in our body. It's a pretty fundamental organ. Um, So it also helps to with the sort of supporting the digestive system and and starting to heal the gut. Um, The other supplement is a magnesium 
um, supplement. And magnesium is amazing. I'm see, I'm looking at my notes. I'm going to be honest with you because I'm still, I'm still new to the the supplements. I'm blown away by how incredible it's been for my clients having the two together. Um, but magnesium is really good for helping with um, any indigestion or headaches. It's brilliant at maintaining or crucial actually for maintaining um, a healthy body. It helps to reduce fatigue. It has a positive effect on your cardiovascular system. It helps to regulate your blood pressure, your energy production, muscle and nerve and brain function. Um, it helps you with better sleep, healthier aging, and help to balance out those blood sugar levels. So along with the, nat the, the natural high quality supplements and learning the skill of managing your mind and your emotions, those two together to me are just a winning combination on how to get control of your cravings and continue that control. Because this isn't a one-time, one-hit wonder. It's not like you can just take a pill and be fixed. Unfortunately, it would have been amazing if I could sell you that, but I can't. So this is a really good introduction on learning the skills on how to manage your mind so that you can, whilst your brain is active, you can continue to manage it. So it's, I think, in my humble opinion, it is one of the most amazing programs. Um, a client of mine messaged me the other day, actually, and said, she, this is two groups ago. And she said, I've just been on holiday. She'd been camping out in the, out in the bush. She's, she lives abroad. And she said, I had one piece of sugar, one bit of sugar the whole two weeks. And she said that was unheard of for her because she would normally go on holiday and she would just eat her way through the whole holiday and it would all be sugar related things. So for her to actually go on holiday, enjoy the holiday, feel amazing at the end of it was just un unheard of in her life. So that was as, as a result of starting to learn how to manage her mind and her emotions, which is just, I think, amazing. I'm also going to be another uh, honestly drop with you is that I always feel really uncomfortable when I'm asking for money. I, 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 or it, there's, there's a limiting belief in me that I should be able to do this for free, that I should help people for nothing. And it always, it always makes me uncomfortable. And it's the same discomfort of experiencing an urge. We can be uncomfortable and do it anyway. And the reason I'm able to tell you about my program is because I know how much it would help you in your life. And it was only because I know it will help you that I'm able to deal with that discomfort and do it anyway. Just like I'm able to experience the urge for sugar and not respond to it, I can experience this any form of discomfort, the nervousness of doing a presentation, the frustration sometimes when my children are acting up. I know that I'm creating that with my thoughts. I can deal with it and move forward anyway with my logical thinking. So if this sounds good to you, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is exactly what you need. And especially after the summer when a lot of us have had a few too many ice creams, if we're honest with ourselves, um, then this is, this is going to be a really great introduction for you to come into. And it's only £187. And, and I think, how much money would you save if you weren't having a cake every time you had a coffee? If you were able to meet your friends and go for a walk and enjoy the true connections rather than spending money on the food or the drink that goes along with it? How much money would you actually save if you weren't putting a whole ton of shit in your shopping basket every time you went to the supermarket or the extra few pounds when you're stood in the, the stood waiting to pay for your petrol or your diesel and you get distracted by the snacks there? This could actually save you money. And I know for sure it would actually save your health and your emotional and physical well-being too. So because I know it will help you, if you're willing to sign up by um, tomorrow evening, you can get a 20% discount. So what I'm going to do in just a second is I'm going to put a link into the chat so that you can click on that to join and I'll give you the code for the discount. And if you're outside, if you're listening to this and you're actually outside the UK, then please get in touch with me because the postage will be slightly different. It might be that we just need to order it from a slightly different, um, in a slightly different, the products in a slightly different way for you. 
But basically, my next group program starts on the, um, well, the group access will open on Friday the 23rd. So I will invite you into the Facebook group on Friday the 23rd and start warming you up, ready for our first live call on Monday the 26th. And they're on uh, at 7.30 in the evening. They're all recorded. Um, so if you're not able to make it live, I would highly encourage you to make the time for yourself to because having the conversation is where you learn and get awareness. And I'm able to point things out to you with love that you just wrote here <laughs> yourself. Um, so I, I, would highly, I would highly encourage you to come to them live. But if for some reason you can't make it, then they're all recorded and I give them to you afterwards. So I'm going to put the link in the chat. If anybody has any questions, please feel free for me or for Sue. Um, please feel free to put it in the chat box. Or if you want to raise your hand, I can actually bring you on and we can have a conversation. Um, and um, you can you can let me know what you think. But I, I, I've been blown away by the results that my client had. Another one of my clients, actually, she's also just been on holiday and she also came back and said um, that she, she only had one ice cream the whole two weeks that she was away, whereas normally she would have had lots and then came home feeling rubbish. But she actually came home feeling like an absolute badass because she was making decisions that benefited her. She was making decisions that actually made her feel better, that, that helped enhance her energy so that then she was so much more present for her kids. She enjoyed the holiday so much more, even though at moments when she was experiencing her emotion and the, the craving, that might have been uncomfortable. The long term benefit of it was was huge for her. She was a big drinker of um, Coke, like cans of Coke. She hasn't had any Coca-Cola now for um, almost eight weeks and she's feeling so much better for it. So this works. You've got to you've got to be willing to, to do the mind work yourself. But like Sue just said. The results on the other side are phenomenal, the increased energy levels, better sleep, balanced hormones, um, reducing any aggravations in your joints inflammation in your stomach we live in a we we live in a society that has stress we don't need to add more stress onto our external into our internal bodies we can actually we are empowered to do this work for ourselves and i would love to support you and help you through that um if you're willing to come on this journey with me so, Sue, was there anything else that you wanted to say? No, I think you've covered it all perfectly. Lovely. <laughs> thank you very much. So thank you for attending this evening. It's really, whilst I can't actually see you, it's lovely to see you. <laughs> and I'll be sending uh, the recording out anyway. Um, the link is in the chat. You can actually save the chat yourself by if you click on the chat, there's the three little buttons. Um, and if you click on those three little buttons, the ellipsis, you can save the chat, which means then you've got the link. But I'm going to be emailing this out to you tomorrow anyway. Thank you for joining me. It is my honor to be able to help you. And even if I don't see you in the group, just starting this will fundamentally start to change your relationship with sugar. Have an amazing evening. Bye. Bye.